Hello everyone, welcome to another video on Python series of tutorials by Simply Learn. In this session, we will look at lists, tuples and dictionaries in Python. Now let's see the agenda for today. First, we will learn about the lists in Python, its characteristics and explore it in Jupyter Notebook. Then we will learn about tuples in Python, its characteristics and we will also explore tuples in Jupyter Notebook. After that, we will have a look at dictionaries in Python its characteristics and we'll head to Jupyter Notebook to understand the dictionaries. So let's start with lists in Python. Imagine you have different values. You have numbers, you have strings. Now if you want to group them together, you can do this job in Python with the help of lists or you have worked with arrays in any other language like C++ or Java. This is the similar stuff in here which is list. A list can be defined as a collection of objects, values or items of different types and these collections are enclosed within the square brackets and are separated by commas. Let's understand this with the help of an example. We will create a list and name it as list1 and insert the elements in square brackets and separate them with the help of commas. List1 equal to square brackets 1 comma adam comma 107 comma usa. And in list, we have our first element at 0th index. And we have 1 at 0 index, Adam at 1 index, 107 at 2nd index, USA at 3rd index. And talking about the reverse index, it starts with minus 1 index value. We have USA at minus 1 index value, 107 at minus 2 index value, Adam at minus 3 index value, and 1 at minus 4 index value. We will explore the list with various examples in Jupyter Notebook in a while. Till then, let's look at the characteristics of lists. First, the lists are ordered. When we say that lists are ordered, it means that the items have a defined order and that order will not change. If you add new items to a list, the new items will be placed at the end of the list. Second, elements of the list can be accessed by index values. Third, lists can store various types of elements for example numbers, strings, or lists itself. Fourth, lists are mutable. The list is changeable, meaning that we can change, add, and remove items in a list after it has been created. Lists allow duplicate elements. Since lists are indexed, lists can have items with the same value. Let's have a look at some methods of lists in Python. The first one is append. It adds an element at the end of the list. For syntax, we can write list1 dot append and in round brackets we have to write the element which we want to append. The next is insert. It adds an element at the specified position. Its syntax is name of the list dot insert and in round brackets we'll write the index at which we want to insert the element and comma and after that the element which we want to insert. Third is extend. It adds the element of a list to the end of the current list. Its syntax is list1 dot extend and in round brackets we will add the element like list2 which we want to extend in the list. The next is index. It returns the index of the first element with the specified value. And its syntax is list1 dot index and the element which we want to fetch the index. The next is remove. It removes the item with the specified value. Its syntax is list1 dot remove and in round brackets we write the element which we want to remove from the list. The next is sort. This method is used to sort the list. Its syntax is list1 dot sort. The next is reverse. It reverses the order of the list. Its syntax is list1 dot reverse. Let's move to Jupyter Notebook to explore these methods. Let's start with creating a list. We will name the list as list1 and we will create equal to and we will start with square brackets and we will write our first element that would be apple comma space next element orange comma space the next element banana comma space the next element Kiwi. Now we will get this list printed. For that, we will write the syntax print and in round brackets, we will write the list name that would be list1 
and run the command. You can see here that the list is printed. Now let's create a different list with some different elements. List2 equal to and in square brackets we'll write apple. Now we'll insert a list in a list. For that we will write a list in square brackets 8 comma 4 comma 6 and comma the next element that will write orange the next element banana now we'll print this list to print this we'll write print round brackets will write list 2 and run the command here we will get the list 2 printed we can access any element in the list so for that we will write the syntax print we want to access the second element that will be the third element from the list one for that we will write the syntax print list one and in square brackets we will write the index 2 and run the command we will get the third element from the list one that is banana now we will access an element from the list 2 for that we will write the command print list 2 and in square bracket we will write 1 and in square bracket we will write 2 and run the command what we get is 6 so to access an element from a list that is already inserted in a list we have to write this syntax so this syntax tells us that we will first access the first index element that is 846 the list and in that we will access the second index value that would be 0 1 and 2 that is 6 so this is the syntax to access an element in a list that is already inserted in a list now we will see a reverse index order for that we will write the command print list 1 and in square brackets we will write the index minus 1 and we will run this command and we get kiwi as output now we will see slicing in python. We can access a range of items in a list by using the slicing operator. Now we will see an example to see the slicing operator work in python. For that we will write the syntax print list1 and in square brackets we will write 1 slicing operator 3 and run the command. What we see is orange and banana as an output from the list 1. When you write 1 ratio 3 that is 1 slicing operator 3, it gives you the elements at index 1, 2 and not 3. So we get the output as orange, comma, banana. Now we will see another example for the slicing operator. We will write print list 1 and in square brackets we will write 3 and slicing operator run the command here we can get only tv when we write a single number before slicing operator it would print the value at that index value and all the other elements that are present in the list but in this list we have only tv as the last element so it would print third index value and not more than that now we'll see append function. For that we'll write the syntax list1 dot append and in round brackets we'll write the element which we want to insert at the last of the list. We'll write guava and run it and now we will print the list to see the result. Here we can see that guava is added at the last of the list. Now we'll see extend function. For that we'll write the index list1 dot extend and in round brackets we will write in square brackets the particular elements we want to insert in the list. So we will write watermelon and the next element we want to insert would be muskmelon. That would be in inverted commas. And we also want this list to be printed. 
so we'll write print list one and execute this command here we can get watermelon and muskmelon added just after the list just at the last elements of the list now if you want to delete a particular element from the list you can delete it with the syntax del space the list name you want to delete the element and in square brackets you will write the index for the element you want to delete we have written the fifth index value so we'll run this command and we'll get the list printed we can see that the fifth index value that is watermelon is not there in list one it's been deleted now you can also do this with another method that is remove for that we'll write list one dot remove and in round brackets we'll write the particular element we want to remove we'll write that that is kiwi and we also want the list to be printed so we'll write print in round brackets list one and run this command we get that the kiwi is being removed from the list one now there is another method that is pop we'll write that command print in round brackets we'll write list one dot pop and we'll write the index value what we want to remove from the list that is one and we also want the list to be printed so for that we'll write the command print list one and we'll run this command okay we have not written the name of the list correctly so now list one now so at the one index that was orange that has been removed from the list and now this is the new list now we can see another method that is clear that removes all the elements from the list so this we will apply on the list to list to dot clear method and we'll also write another command that would be print list to and execute this command we can see that the list 2 is empty now all the elements from the list 2 have been removed now we'll see another method that is reverse for that we'll write the command list 1 dot reverse and round brackets and we also want the list 1 to be printed for that we'll write the command print list 1 and execute this command here we can see that the list 1 is being reversed muskmelon guava banana apple now if you want a particular index element to be accessed you can have the syntax for that you can write that print list1 dot index and in round brackets you just need to write the element for what you want to get the index and just run this command you will get the index of the element guava that is one we have another method in list that is count so count is used to give the number of times the particular element is present in the list so for that we will write the syntax print sorry print and in round brackets we will write the list name list one dot count and in round brackets we will write the particular element for which we want to get the number of times that has been present in the list We'll write musk melon and run this command it would give us the value 1 because it's been present in the list for only a single time now let's move to the tuples so tuple tuple is almost same as list we can have different types of values in tuples the difference in list is we can change value because list is mutable and tuple is immutable that means you cannot change the value a tuple can be defined as a collection of objects values or items of different types and these collections are enclosed within the circle brackets and separated by commas let's understand this with the help of an example we'll create a tuple and name it as tup1 and insert the elements in round brackets and separate them with the help of commas so tup1 equal to round brackets the first element is 1 comma and the second element is adam 
third element is 107 and the fourth element is USA. Now, in tuples, we have our first element at 0th index and we have 1 at 0 index and Adam at 1 index and 107 at 2nd index and USA at 3rd index. And for the reverse index, it starts with minus 1 index value. We have USA at minus 1 value, 107 at minus 2 sec index value and Adam at minus 3 index value and 1 at minus 4 index value. We will explore the tuples with various examples in Jupyter Notebook. But till then, let's look at the characteristics of tuple. So the first is, the tuples are ordered. When we say that tuples are ordered, it means that the items have a defined order and that order will not change. Elements of the tuples can be accessed by index. Tuple items are indexed. The first item has index 0. The second index has 1. Third, tuples can store various types of elements that is strings, arrays and many other elements. The next is tuples are immutable. Tuples are unchangeable meaning that we cannot change, add or remove items after the tuple has been created. Next is tuples allow duplicate elements. Since tuples are indexed, they can have items with the same value. Let's have a look at some methods of tuples in Python. First, that is index. We can use the index operator to access an item in a tuple where the index starts from zero. Its syntax is the name of the tuple dot index and in round brackets we'll write the element for which we want to access the index. The second is slicing. We can access a range of items in a tuple by using the slicing operator. For that, we'll write the syntax tuf1 and the range for which we want to slice the tuple. The third is concatenation. Here we will add two tuples, that is, we just have to write the name of the tuples to add them and we'll place the plus operator just between them. The next is repetition. We can have the same item multiple times in a tuple. For that, we will just have to write the syntax, the name of the tuple and the multiplication operator into the times we want that value to be present in the tuple. The next is count. It returns the number of items a specified value occurs in a tuple. So for that we have the syntax tuple1.count and in round brackets we will just write the element for which we want to count the number of times that specified value has been occurred. We also have another method that is index. It searches the tuple for a specified value and returns the position of that where it was found. Now let's move to Jupyter Notebook to explore these methods. So let's start. First we will comment that will be tuples and we'll move to the next column and first we'll create a tuple. For that we'll write the command tup1 that would be the name of the tuple and in round brackets we'll insert the elements that would be apple comma orange comma banana comma kiwi now we will print this tuple we will just have to write print and in round brackets the name of the tuple and run the command we will get the tuple printed now if you just want to insert a single element in a tuple for that we will write the command tup2 equal to in round brackets we will write a single element that would be apple and run that command the tuple is being created but this tuple is not been considered as tuple in python it's been considered as string so let's check the type of this tuple for that we will write print type and in round brackets we will write the name of the tuple we want to check we will run this command here we can see that it is showing a string so a single element is been shown as string in python if you want that it should be tuple for that you just have to insert a single comma in the tuple and now run this command you will get this type as tuple now if you want to access any element in a tuple for that you just have to write the command print tup1 and in square brackets the index value 
that is 0 and here you quote the value apple that is at 0th index value in top 1. Now you can also access the element in the reverse order so that will write the command print top 1 and in square brackets you will write the index value minus 1 and run the command here you can get the value kiwi from the reverse index order. Now we also have the slicing operator in tuples also. For that we will write the command print tap1 in square brackets the index values will we will run this command print tap1 index value 1 slicing operator 3 so it has printed orange and banana so what does it means it prints the index value 1 and 2 and not 3 we also have a repetition method in tuples for that we just have to write a simple syntax like print in square brackets the element you want to repeat we will write the element as repeat only and comma to just consider as tuple and just after the bracket we would have to write the multiply operator and the number of times the element should be repeated in the tuple now we will run this command you can see that the tuple has been created with the element repeat and the number of times is 3 that we have written just after the element so the tuple has been created now we'll see the count method for that we'll write the command print the name of the tuple dot count and in round brackets we'll write the element for which we want to know the number of times it's been present in the tuple and we'll execute the command it gives us 0 as r top 1 doesn't consist guava as an element so it gives us the count as 0 now we'll see another method that would be index for that we'll write the command print top 1 dot index and in round brackets we'll write the element for which we want to fetch the index of that element banana and we'll run this command we will get the index of the element banana that is 2 0 1 2 so we get the index of the element banana now if we want to use the append method in tuples we have to first create the tuple into the list for that we'll write the command y equal to list and in round brackets we'll write the name of the tuple which we want to convert in the list now we'll use the append method to the list that is y dot append and we'll insert an element that would be guava and now we would just assign the y list to a variable top1 we have now converted the y list to the tuple with this syntax that is tuple y and we have assigned it to the top1 value now we will print this tuple and execute the command here we can see that we have used the append method in the tuple first we have changed the tuple to the list by this command y equal to list tub1 then we have used the append method y dot append and appended the element guava then we have changed the y list to the tuple that is tub1 equal to tuple the name of the list and then we have printed the tuple we can also add two tuples by another method for that we will write another tuple that would be tub3 equal to we will insert an element that would be cherry and now we want it to be added in tub1 so we'll write tub1 plus equal to tub3 
and now we will print the final tuple that would be tup1 and run the command here we can see that we have added two tuples that is tuple1 and tuple3 which consists of cherry and here we get the whole tuple as tuple1 now to execute loops in tuples we'll write the command for that we'll write the syntax for space a variable x in the name of the tuple colon and then we will print the particular element one by one and we'll run this command here we can see that all the elements have been printed from the tuple now let's understand dictionaries in python in lists you can fetch the elements with the help of index numbers but if you want to specify a different type of index for it example if you have a list of eight values and you want to fetch the fifth one you will use the index but if you have key for each element then you can use the key to access that element example phone book if you want to fetch a number you will use a name and you get a number and officially if we talk about dictionary if you want to understand the meaning of a word you go to that page and you look at the word and understand the meaning of it so this type of concept where you have a key and corresponding to that you have a value we can achieve this with the help of dictionaries python dictionary can be defined as a collection of objects values or items of different types stored in key value pair format these multiple key value pairs created are enclosed within the curly braces and each key is separated from its value by the colon let's understand this with the help of an example dict1 equal to curly braces the first key is a and corresponding to that we have value and that is separated by colon and after the key value pair that is separated by a comma the next is b key and that has a corresponding value 2 after that we have inserted a comma to separate it from other values now we have a third key that is c and corresponding to that we have a value 3 let's see some characteristics of dictionaries the dictionaries are ordered from python version 3.7 when we say that dictionaries are ordered it means that the items have a defined order and that order will not change second that is elements of the dictionaries cannot be accessed by index third dictionaries can store various types of elements fourth dictionaries are mutable dictionaries are changeable meaning that we can change add or remove items after the dictionary has been created fifth one is dictionaries doesn't allow duplicate elements dictionaries cannot have two items with the same key now let's see some methods in dictionaries the first is clear method it removes all the elements from the dictionary and its syntax is the name of the dictionary dot clear the second is get it returns the value of the specified key the syntax is dict1 dot key and in square brackets we have to write the key name the third is keys it returns a list containing the dictionary's key its syntax is dict1 dot keys the next is pop it removes the element with the specified key its syntax is dict1 dot pop and in round brackets we would write the particular key name and the next method is pop item it removes the last inserted key value pair from the dictionary and its syntax is dict1 dot pop item Let's move to the Jupyter Notebook and execute these methods. First, we'll add a comment that would be dictionaries. And now we'll create a dictionary. For that, we'll write the syntax name of the dictionary equal to curly braces. First, we'll write the key value, then colon and the value corresponding to it. We will write apple, then separate it by comma, and then the second key value, colon, and the value corresponding to that key, that would be orange. When it would be separated by comma, then we will assign another key value, that would be 3, colon, and the value corresponding to that would be banana, comma next with the key value would be 4 colon and in inverted commas we'll write the value corresponding to it and we'll print this dictionary 
print text one and execute this command here we can see that the dictionary is printed with one key value we have the corresponding value apple with two key value we have the corresponding value orange with three key value we have the corresponding value banana and with four key value we have the corresponding value kiwi now to access a particular element we can't do that in dictionary but we can access a particular value with the help of key we can do that in dictionary for that we would write the syntax print the name of the dictionary and in square brackets we will write the key value that would be 1 and run the command we would get the value corresponding to the key value that is apple that is corresponding to the key value 1 now we will see a get method in dictionary for that we will write the command print name of the dictionary dot get and in round brackets we will just write the key value and run this command we will get the corresponding value to the key value that is apple now we will use another method that would be pop for that we will write the command print dict one dot pop and in round brackets we will write the key value for the value we want the element to be removed from the dictionary we will execute this command and we get kiwi as the output now if we print the dictionary print dict one we can see that the fourth key value and the value corresponding to that key value has been removed by the pop method now we can also print the length of the dictionary for that we will write the command print len and in round brackets we will write the name of the dictionary and just execute the command we will get 3 as the output as it has been considered one unit second unit and third unit so the length is 3 and we have another method that is sorted for that to we'll write the command print sorted and the name of the dictionary dict1 we will execute this command it would give us all the key values in a sorted manner when executed with this command now we can see another method that is keys for that we have to write the command print round brackets name of the dictionary dot keys round brackets and we'll run this command and we'll get all the keys that are present in dictionary there is another method that is values for that we'll write the command print dict1.values round brackets and we'll execute this command we'll get all the values that are present in the dictionary now we'll see another method that is update that is used to update the particular value corresponding to the key value or update the dictionary with more values to be inserted in the dictionary for that we'll write the command dict1.update in round brackets first we will write the curly braces the key value semicolon colon and corresponding to that we will write its value which we want to update watermelon and we will also print the dictionary we will execute this command we will get that the second value that is watermelon that's been updated previously it was orange and now it's watermelon so it's been updated by this command and we can also use this command to add more elements to the dictionary for that we'll write the syntax dict one dot update down brackets curly braces and the key value colon and corresponding to that we'll write the value musk melon and we'll print the dictionary and we'll execute this command sorry we just omitted the name of the dictionary dict one dot update now we'll execute this command here we can see that the value has been added to the dictionary 
now we'll see another method that is pop for that we'll write the command dict1 dot pop and in round brackets the key value for which we want the value to be removed from the dictionary and we will print the dictionary and execute this command here we can see that the second key value has been removed from the dictionary and we will see another method that would be dict1 dot pop item and then we will print the dictionary and execute the command here we can see that the pop item has removed the last element from the dictionary and we are left with only two elements in the dictionary now we will see some loops in the dictionary for that we will write the command for x in the name of the dictionary that is dict1 colon and then we will write print dict1 and in square brackets the variable x and we will execute this command so with this loop we can print all the values corresponding to the key values in the dictionary now to print both the key and values corresponding to it we can run a loop for that we will write the command for x comma y in dict1 dot items colon print x comma y and run this command we can get the key and the values corresponding to it now if you want to copy the particular dictionary in another dictionary you can write the command first you will name the dictionary you want to create and copy the elements we will name it as my dict equal to now we'll write the command dict1 dot copy and then we will print the new dictionary that is my dict and we'll run this command okay we have not inserted the round bracket here now we'll run this command here we can see that we have printed the my dict dictionary and it has the same values as dict1 now we'll see another method to delete the whole dictionary for that we'll write dict1 dot clear it would remove all the values from the dictionary and will also print the dictionary after that run this command here we can see all the elements from the dictionary have been removed with that we have come to the end of this session i hope it was interesting and informative if you liked it please let us know in the comment section also do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more from simply learn hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here